Are you looking for a way to connect to your favorite app but there's no connector yet? Don't worry, even without a native connector, there's always a way to get your data. And one of them is using our web service connector. With our web service connector, you can set up a connection to a wide range of web services using REST or SOAP formats. And it offers many options, allowing you to connect to a wide range of applications through their APIs and easily access your data. But before starting this setup, don't forget to check your app's API documentation and gather all the information you need, such as, for example, the authentication method, the credentials and the data endpoints you'd like to retrieve. Navigate to the Connections Explorer through the main menu. Click the Add New button and search for the connector. In the Server tab, choose the protocol used by your app, HTTP or HTTPS. Type the address of your app's API in the host field. In this example, we are going to connect to ClickData's API. In the Authentication tab, choose the method you want to use. Many APIs come with multiple authentication types, from the least strong, like non or basic, to the most secured ones, such as OAuth2. Here are some examples on how to fill the fields depending on the methods. Non, basic, bearer, and OAuth2. Copy this callback URL if your app's web service is requesting it for the setup. In the headers tab, you can define headers to be passed when connecting, if needed. For instance, some APIs require to pass the authentication with a specific header, such as here. Then head over to the test tab to ensure your connection is working and click Create. Awesome! Your connection is now set up and you can move on to the next step to start fetching your data. Now you can create your first dataset. Head to the Tables Explorer through the main menu. Click on Add New and give the dataset a name. In the Endpoint tab, define the endpoint you wish to get data from. In this example, we're going to get data from the dashboard's endpoint. You can add additional parameters in the query string field. For instance, if you'd like to add a filter or a period to delimit the query. Some parameters are mandatory, so make sure you have to check your app documentation first to get it right. Make sure it is using the correct method. Headers can be added here too, if you haven't defined them at the connection level yet. In post queries, you can define a request body here. This is an example where we send a post query to the user's endpoint in Clay Data to create a new user. If your endpoint returns a paginated result, use the pagination tab to define the method, incremental or by reference. Throttling can be set up if your app's API imposes a quota of maximum queries by second, minute or hour. Great, now everything is ready for testing. Hit that button to test your call. This will send a query to the API with all the parameters set up. If you get a 200 response, everything is perfect and you're ready to move on to the next step. If not, read the error message carefully. That's a response from your app's web service that will help you understand how to correct your query. In the Node tab, you can now see the structure of the data returned by the web service. Choose the level you wish to get data from. Toggle between this tab and the Preview tab to check the result and adjust it if needed. If you're happy with the preview, hit save and the data will start loading. You can now set up a schedule to refresh your data automatically at the desired pace. You can also check out our help center for more examples of API connections and detailed presentation of pagination, recurring calls and other advanced features. You will find the links in the description below. I hope this video was useful and if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team. They're always happy to help.